Hello, I'm Paul F. Tompkins. Welcome to Know You Shut Up. If you're new to our program, perhaps you came here because you're sick of the way more established media are covering the news, particularly this very important election. Well, we couldn't agree more. Our pledge to our viewers is to give them the information we think they absolutely need. It's not all about ratings. Sometimes you, oh, 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 I'm getting word that there is a hallway that Donald Trump is said to be walking through at some point this evening. We will keep monitoring this hallway for Mr. Trump's passage. This is No You Shut Up. On this week's show, Thomas Lennon does some sexy juggling. And John Hodgman makes an imaginary salad. Gently coat with dressing, don't drown it. We begin tonight with highlights from Tuesday's primaries. Please welcome our Shut Up the Vote election team. Gang, Super Tuesday 3, let's talk about it. Tuesday was an exciting night for both parties. Republican frontrunner Donald Trump extended his commanding lead while Democrat Hillary Clinton had a night that Bernie Sanders would describe as huge. But the big story was how John Kasich won Ohio, barely kept his campaign alive, and impressively handled the most confetti anyone has ever seen. Wow, look at this guy. Hey, Kasich, hear that sound? It's the sound of every 15-year-old Mexican girl in America crying into their churros because you stole all the quinceanera confetti! He gets all that for winning his own state. If he wins anywhere else, he's gonna end up getting shot to death by a thousand t-shirt cannons. Boom shakalaka. Sports. Let's quickly check in with that hallway to see if Donald Trump has arrived yet. No. Hillary Clinton's recent gaffes didn't seem to change voters' minds, and her speech was strategically boring and free of any references to the Reagans or AIDS. What terrible gaffes could she have made? Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, uh, she could have congratulated Donald Trump on opening up a national conversation on race. That would have been terrible. Or congratulated Bill Cosby for opening up a national conversation about mixed drinks. Good fantasy gaffes, guys. We now wrap it up with this sad story out of Florida. While it is not God's plan that I be president in 2016, or, or maybe ever, and while today my campaign is suspended, the fact that I've even come this far is evidence of how special America truly is. That's right, Marco Rubio. You never had a chance. God doesn't like you, and he's the ultimate superdelegate. So put on your tiny lady boots and take an inner tube back to Cuba. Star. We have a tradition here at Know You Shut Up where we say goodbye to the failed campaigns in a ceremony befitting the viciousness of the American political landscape. We slice their heads in half with the help of professional sword makers, Cold Steel. We now say farewell to Mr. Rubio. Very satisfying. Our guest for this segment is a comedian, actor, a comedic actor, a producer, a director, a producing director, and a comedian actor sector. You can see him in The Odd Couple, which returns April 7th after The Big Bang Theory. Thomas Lennon, welcome to Know You Shut Up. Thank you very much, Paul. It's a pleasure a, to be back. It's a pleasure to Thank see you. you, as always. Mm -hmm. Tom, are you like Felix Unger in any way, shape, or form? Um, I suppose I am. I have a bunch of uh, compulsive disorders. You, you've hung around with me. Sure. You know my stuff about the germs, right? You don't like them. I don't like the germs. You don't like and them. And I don't like the elevators. Mm. And I found out something really interesting about myself this year, which is I don't like the salt mines. You're talking about mines where they uh, get salt. Yep. In the mountains uh, above Salzburg, mm -hmm. which literally means salt city. City of salt. City of salt. Who doesn't love going in and seeing an old thousand year old salt mine and riding a tiny miniature train right. into the depths, like really like, like Dante's Inferno mm. to the first bulge of hell. And turns out I don't. Mm. I had a full blown panic attack, Paul. And you know who else got to discover it at the same time was a, a group of German elementary school children. They discovered this about you. They got to discover it about me and they got to think, oh, here is Felix Anger from the odd couple who is crying mm -hmm. who is looked like he has vet himself. What is it about f the character of Felix Unger that German children love so much? Precision. Mm -hmm. You know, he would get the trains running on time. Mm -hmm. Tom, we've been talking here for a little while now, but none of it has been about Donald Trump. So let's talk about Donald Trump. Oh. <laughs> well, the, I'm 
we're pretty good friends. I, I thought you knew that. You know, I'm I'm currently uh, Donald Trump's speechwriter. So, like most people, I assume that Donald Trump's speeches are all stream of consciousness ramblings filled with insults and brags. Not true. Uh, wow, that's the the most naive comment I've heard in a long time. <laughs> because when Senator Trump is is out on the the campaign trail, actually, every word you hear him say is carefully scripted by me. Yes. Wow. I mean, can we see? Why don't we roll a clip of one of the speeches? I think we have footage of of me at at a rally. I hope that we do. But we're going to find out if Arnold is quick, because if he's not quick, he's not going to look good. When you have Omarosa and all the other ones coming at you, you got to be quick. I love our vets. You know, in New Hampshire, they have a tremendous vet population. And I will tell you, we won New Hampshire, by the way. We won South Carolina. We won everything. We won Nevada. We won Nevada. I hope Arnold does really well. But I was going to do that, and they, they, I mean, they actually renewed the show with me in the upfronts, and uh, I just, I just said I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. I have the magazine, other things. Get him, get him out of here. Get him out. <laughs> wow. A real peek behind the curtain, yeah. Tom. Thank you for that. He's but man. I'm curious, yeah. you seem like such a genteel chap. So <laughs> how are you able to write for someone that many people consider a disgusting human being? Watch your f-ing mouth, oh. first off. I just have a little ritual that I do. I mean, it's stupid. You don't want to, you want to see it? I, 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 I actually would like to see it. I could show it If you, you wouldn't mind, I would love to see uh, it. No, please. Let's see this, Tom. I'll, uh, let me show you the, uh, the process. I okay. just, uh, it's, um, <clears throat> it's just a... Uh, a process that I like, a vinyasa that I like to do, which is it just starts with this, which is I just do Trump face stretches. I Trump my face for about 20 times, and then I do the tiny mad sandwich. I do mad sandwich, mad sandwich, and hate squats. I do hate squats. I do hate squats, and then I kick an immigrant. Oh, wow. Kick an immigrant. That seems harsh, but I see how it works in context. Please don't interrupt the process, because oh, so I'm sorry? feeling it right now, and I'm Very just feeling sorry. the Trump is coursing in my veins like an eagle just landed on my heart in America, in a wall, and now I got to, oh my God, I got to write the next Trump speech while it's fresh in my mind, uh, okay? okay. Okay, okay go. I gotta write it right now. Absolutely. While it's fresh in my head. <laughs> Witness me! Witness me! Well, I guess he's off to write that speech. Thomas, thank you for being on the show, and I hope your heart doesn't explode. Coming up, more No You Shut Up when No You Shut Up returns. Hey, I'm sorry, I just I left my phone somewhere, I think. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh my god, that's right. I didn't see it on the thing. Oop. You good? Yeah, my lift is here. Oh. Yeah. Javier, two stars. Just my luck, huh? Good luck, man. Thanks. But when she fell down, dead in the street, the jewels that she had been concealing in her mouth spilled out. I love that Encyclopedia Brown. Yeah, it's a weird one, right? I know, right? Welcome back. Our next guest is an author, comedian, and thespian. His podcast is called Judge John Hodgman, a title that in just three words cleverly incorporates 100% of his name with one word left over to not say. John Hodgman, welcome. Thank you very much, Paul. You know we're old friends, so it should be very easy for us to banter with each other. Well, we're doing it right now, John. Just a little back and forth, uh, uh, friendly banter. Yes. uh, Reminding people that we're friends and we're their friends as well. Well, we're not their friends, no. We're our friends. John Hodgman, if you were running for president, what would your slogan be? I am not your enemy. I think that establishes trust with the voter. Yes. And I like to say it very sternly, Mm -hmm. so they understand that I'm being very sincere. John, I'm not naming names, but some presidential candidates are blaming political correctness for everything that's wrong with America. Agree or disagree? I agree to disagree. We should all be able to get along and say exactly what we want to say. We should be. Why do you think, John, that it's so difficult for Americans to get along with each other? Well, Paul, some are from the wrong race or gender, and if that offends you, I'm sorry, I intended to. I'm not your enemy. I'm sorry if you were offended? If you were offended, I'm sorry that you have that problem because you're too sensitive. But Paul, I really just came here for some serious political discussion. You wanna talk about Trump? Yeah. Okay. John, I wanna ask you about one of the more eyebrow-raising moments in this election. Let's take a look. He referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee you. Well, now, correct me if I'm wrong, John, but that is a presidential candidate talking on television about as you know. Yeah, Paul, that's right. And here's the thing. I'm actually really glad you brought this up. I'm glad Donald Trump brought it up as well. I mean, the discussion about penis size doesn't get the analytic clinical recognition it deserves. I don't follow. You see, penis size 
can be used to study someone's merits for elected office. I'm talking size, girth, heft, shape, color, curvature, any distinguishing olfactory minutiae. These are all determining factors we at the Burns Johnson Research Institute use to predict how effective an individual will be if elected president. Uh, well, what about the testicles? Do they factor into this at all? Oh, you mean the bing bong dingle dangles? Precisely. No. Hmm, makes sense. Look, remember the recent media furor over Adolf Hitler's deformed micropenis, or what we call micropenis? Sure. Now, obviously I can't show you photos on television, but Lady Wiener, if you wouldn't mind. Science! This is my research assistant, Lady Wiener, probably one of the brightest PhD candidates we've had at the Institute for some time. Dissertations are easy! That's right. <laughs> you see, Paul, Hitler's penis can be best represented on TV by something like this. Lady Wiener, thank you. Ow! A man with a Category 13 phallus such as this is more likely to be aggressive, insecure, and genocidal. No offense, Paul. Oh, been taken. Now this <clears throat> represents Teddy Roosevelt. Now this feels like it's all just feeding into generic stereotypes about masculinity and penis size. Well, that's a real shame, Paul, because this is purely historical. Every president is required by the oath of office to donate their penis to the Burns Johnson Research Institute after they pass on. It started back in 1889 when Grover Cleveland famously said, this thing belongs in a museum. The peni may be old, but our techniques are evolving very rapidly. Lady Wiener? Yep, here it is, okay. Thank you. This belonged to Warren G. Harding, the White House's greatest lover. It's on loan from the Smithsonian. Here, Paul, would you like to take a look? Oh, absolutely. Oh, this is gonna make me some nice wallets. <laughs> <laughs> ah, not sure you're gonna get that one back, John. Well, it doesn't matter. Still plenty of penises to go around, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is amazing what the Burns Johnson Research Institute has accomplished in this bold new field. And thanks to Donald Trump, the persistent work of countless penile scientists can now be brought out of the shadows and be part of the public discourse. Absolutely, John. Now, if Hillary Clinton were to become president, how would the Burns Johnson Institute study her? Good question, Paul. We wouldn't. More When No You Shut Up returns. And an open bar all night long, but don't tell him, okay? What, what are you guys yeah. talking about? Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we have gotten word that Donald Trump may walk down the hallway you see here. We'll keep the hallway in a little box on your screen, so we'll all be ready just in case. It's time for our panel discussion. Joining us this week, conservative Christian Star Schlesinger, Republican Congressman Oliver Pouch, and actor, model, and hot dog, Hot Dog. Hey -o! Tonight's topic, Donald Trump. The presumptive Republican nominee has dominated headlines recently and plunged the GOP into a civil war. Despite the best efforts of the Republican establishment, Trump is pulling away from the pack. Panel, do you think a Trump nomination is dangerous to the GOP? Anyone can answer this question. Of course he's dangerous, pretending he's some everyman who loves the Bible. He's just another spoiled East Coast rich kid who only cares about himself. Well, I fell for that with both bushes, but I ain't eating your baked beans. Dog shouldn't talk. You know, speaking of baked beans, it's a musical fruit. The more you eat, no. you know, that's something Trump hasn't done yet and we have something to look forward to. He's gonna walk out of one of these debate stages, he's gonna cut one. It does seem inevitable. Yeah, doesn't it? Uh, Paul, you may not know this, but GOP stands for Grand Old Party. Old people throw classy parties with expensive vodkas and mixers. <laughs> Sign me up! What is this voice you're doing? Yeah. Grand old party. Yeah, no, I heard you. Why, what is that, what is that supposed oh to be? Oh my, what a beautiful chandelier. I declare, I'm sweating out some vapors at this grand old party. I'd like a martini. Party, party, party. What was the question? Oof. Mm -hmm. Recently at Trump rallies, the Donald has been asking supporters to raise their right hands and pledge support to him. This gesture was almost immediately compared to the Nazi salute. Panel, is this an innocent gesture or a little too Sieg Heile? People raise their hands when they're asking a question. Are we gonna blame a little kid if he raises his hand in school and asks a question like, how many Mexicans can we fit in these cattle cars? No, like no, that. no, no, okay, here's the thing. I ain't defending Trump, but if we accuse everyone who raises their hand of hiling, then every New Yorker is a Nazi, and that place is chock full of Jews, so that don't make no sense. You mean like, because they're hailing cabs? Yeah, they're raising their hands. I gotcha. 
You know, Paul, it's funny. I've actually been learning German by watching Baywatch dubbed into German. Uh, ich liebe ein Hasselhof. Oh, watch out for the title wave. Oh. That wasn't German. That was just you did an accident and said watch out for yeah, the title wave. Yeah, the title wave. He's oh. coming to the beach. That's more of an Austrian accent. Oh. It's really offensive. Immigrants are reportedly applying to become naturalized U.S. citizens at unprecedented rates in recent months. There could be as many as a million by the end of 2016, about 200,000 more than average. Many say these immigrants are naturalizing in order to vote against Donald Trump. Panel, what effect will the influx of new citizens have on the general election? Is it adios for Trump? There is no adios for Trump, Paul. You really think some immigrants are going to take him down? He could genocide Mexico and the angry whites would still vote for him. The train is off the rails and no one's behind the wheel. Embrace the chaos. <sighs> okay, here's the thing. I ain't happy about all these Emmys becoming natties, but at least they can vote for Cruz and then he can just kick them out when he gets elected. Hmm. Well, but if they're naturalized citizens, they can't be Cruz kicked out. Cruz will find a way. We are already here. We are immigrants. From Germany. I hate that voice. Yeah, I hate. I want to punch it in the face. Yeah. Yeah, it's a punchable voice, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a real punchable if that, voice. If that voice had a face, you would want to punch it. One of the knocks on Donald Trump is his attitude toward minorities. I have a great relationship with African Americans, as you possibly have heard. I just have great respect for them, and and I, you know, if they like me, I like them. Do they now? We sent our newest field correspondent, Brianna Baker, out to take the Trumperature of potential voters. Trumperature, good one, Paul. I'm here on the streets of LA to find out just how much African-Americans like Donald Trump. What do you think of when I say Trump? That works, that works, That Doesn't definitely it? works. Kind of rhyme. Rich, pompous jerk. That gets to the heart of the matter. Yeah. He's a clown. He is clowning 24-7, <laughs> each and every day. <laughs> Bias. Racist. I think of Hitler. Are you aware that Donald Trump says that African Americans love him? He said that. I, I never knew that. Do you know any African Americans that do like Donald Trump? I don't know one personally. He has some problems, but he is a little fun. A little bit. Uh, I mean, it was fun, like, the first couple weeks. Yeah. But that was last year. Leave the party. You're yeah. drunk, Dale. If racism and sexism can't stop the Donald, what can? The American vote. So if you, we were to consider ourselves in a blast zone, uh, and you could put Donald Trump on blast, do you know what you would want to say to him? Because if so, I would really like you to put him on blast. Donald Trump, go back where you came from. America doesn't need you. Donald Trump, you suck. You and your ego. Country is not for you to run. I don't know. He acts like he ain't got no at all. Yeah, know. that's very interesting. I see what you're saying. Donald Trump, black people do not like you. Uh, Donald Trump, you shut up. It turns out Donald Trump's relationship with the African-American community isn't as strong as he thinks it is. How can he fix it? Well, it's probably too late, but he could start by politely asking his supporters to stop punching black protesters in the face. Reporting from the streets of LA, I'm Brianna Baker. Back to you, Paul. Brianna Baker, thank you for your service. Wait, I thought I was the one that gets to go outside. More No You Shut Up when No You Shut Up returns. Maybe you'll never go outside again. How do you Ooh, like that? I like going outside. Maybe you'll just, maybe we'll lock you in here and turn off the lights. I don't want to be locked outside. inside. No, you don't, do you? No. Welcome back. Panel, it is time to sound off. And rejoining us is comedian John Hodgman. So, gang, whom should shut up this week? Congressman Pouch will start with you. Hmm. I would like to tell Donald Trump's ex-wife, Marla Maples, to shut up. She's riding the Trump wave and doing the new season of Dance with the Stars. Listen up, Marla. A real Trump woman doesn't prance around doing the Lindy Hop, the Cat Daddy, or the Stanky Leg. A real Trump woman stands absolutely still, looks pretty in an age-inappropriate way, and doesn't speak. Ever! So shut up, Marla Maples! Star Schlesinger! I uh, thank you, Paul. I'd like to tell the Republican Party to shut up. 
All I wanted was an original recipe American who loves God, guns, and traditional gender roles. Instead, we have this Cheetos mix-up bag of idiots. <laughs> Give me regular Cheetos back. Shut up, you sunglass cat. Shut up, the Republican Party. <laughs> oh, where did we go wrong? Not quite sure whom you were telling shut up there, Star. Was it the Cheetos or the Republican Party? Both. All right, twofer. Special guest John Hodgman. Paul, I'd like to get real for a moment and say shut up to the Flint water crisis. You know, running a government like John, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to shut up because I'm getting word that there's movement in the hallway. We go there now. Don't see him yet. No one here really looks like Donald Trump, but... Come on. And now. And now. now. Oh. And now. Come now. And now. And now. And now. And now. And now. Oh. And now. Do you think Trump's ever gonna walk down that hallway? I don't know, hot dog, but I'm gonna watch until he does so I can report on it. I'm sleepy. Oh, you know what? You guys can go to sleep. Just put your heads down and, and uh -oh. I'll watch. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh. <sighs> Well, that's all the time we have for this episode of Know You Shut Up. We're going to take a little break. But remember, we're back June 9th with brand new episodes. Come back and see us June 9th. Going to watch the wall. Come on. Paul, I have to pee. I don't care. I'll take a diet coat. It's going to keep you up. I know my body.